Tracy Brabin, West Yorkshire Mayor, the first and the only woman Metro Mayor. Why? Well, you tell me, because it is one of the best jobs in politics. There's 10 Metro Mayors across the country. Uh, we represent 22 million people. And um, I am the first woman, like you say, but hopefully an inspiration to others. There will be um, other mayors coming through the system with further devolution, which is really exciting, I think. Um, and I'm hoping that women can see, um, you know, that I I'm really enjoying it. We're getting things done and that they are inspired to uh, put their hand in the air to be selected. Do you think it means your priorities as a mayor are different by virtue of the fact that you're a woman? Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, our lived experience as women is it's our superpower, isn't it? Because we know what needs to be done. And I think one of the first decisions I made as mayor was to invite Alison Lowe to be my deputy mayor for police and crime. And as a woman of colour as well, and somebody who was an ex-councillor and also the chair of the police and crime panel, came with enormous experience, but also her own lived experience. And she talks very openly about um, being a survivor of child abuse and so on. And my lived experience together has driven our focus on the safety of women and girls as a priority for our police and crime plan. So um, leadership really matters. Um, and I think um, hopefully that also impacts on our policies. Now, before you were West Yorkshire Mayor, you were a Member of Parliament, a Labour Member of Parliament. Be before that, you had a great life looking at least from the outside. Uh, you had lots of TV roles, amongst which you were Trisha Armstrong in like the greatest show on the planet, <laughs> Coronation true, Street. True. Why Jack in being an actor, an actress for politics? Well, it wasn't that I jacked it in and then decided to be a politician. Fate and circumstance um, decided it for me. Um, you'll remember Joe Cox. Um, as an actor, I often spent time supporting Labour candidates uh, in elections, whether that's councillors or uh, uh, candidates to be MPs. And I met Jo, blown away, she's an incredible woman, and campaigned in Batley and Spen with Jo, and then again when she was elected to uh, keep the local library open. And then when she was murdered, I mean, we were all so shocked. It was so out, out of the blue and awful. Um, when I went to the funeral and I said to one of her friends, what can I do? And she said, do you want to be an MP? I suddenly realised, actually, that's it. That's what I'm, you know, I wasn't guaranteed that I would be the candidate because there were 40 others. But I thought, no, I must do that for my for my town because I was born in Batley. My mum had a cafe in Burstall um, and I knew Joe. I also hadn't tried to be an MP before, so I didn't have that sort of, um, that baggage. And also I think actors have enormous empathy. And I think that was really needed because we were really hurting as a community. And people would see me in the street and burst into tears because it would remind them that I'm only there because Joe wasn't. So really, really tragic. And, and I didn't really know what I was doing either, so I became an MP and I was in so much shock. I'd never even been in the House of Parliament, so it was a, it was a tough gig. Um, but lots of support from colleagues like yourself and others in Parliament to get through. So you've had these great jobs. Politician, leading politician, MP, mayor, actor. But actually your starting life was, was really humble. You grew up in a council house. Well, yeah, and it, what's been really useful about that experience is my dad was always in and out of work. Um, he was a salesman. And we'd bought a house and then couldn't continue paying the rent, uh, the mortgage. And obviously this chimes with so many people at the moment with uh, mortgages sky high. So my mum took the key back to the, to the building society. And for a while, there was huge anxiety that we were homeless and you know we were very young so my mum had two little ones and my dad went to the council and threw himself on the mercy of the council because we were going to be homeless and we got a two bedroom council flat but what was be what was really powerful about that is that i know that i've only been able to achieve what i've achieved because we had that security 
that it wasn't about a landlord who was then going to sell the property or put the rents yeah. up. You know, that's why for me, uh, one of my manifesto commitments, 5,000 affordable homes. And we know that housing is such a huge crisis. You will not flourish unless you have safe home. Um, and that's why it's in London and elsewhere, mayors across the country are really seeing housing as a priority. So it, it, it does motivate you. You know, you, you, what, how, you, how you face challenges or what's in front of you actually uh, is useful when you, have, you, you, know, you go on into a political life. And that's why it's really important that we get diversity in Westminster of people who've lived um, and had different experiences, not all the same journey through, whether that's Eton or Oxbridge and so on. Uh, but they know the price of things. There's not enough people from working class backgrounds in politics. Oh, that's true. And diversity across the region as well, not just from London, you know, uh, from, from the regions outside of London. They bring a completely different voice. And that's why we need to get rid of the House of Lords and have that regions and nations, um, that democratically elected uh, representation of the, uh, you know, of the whole of Engl uh, England and uh, the UK. I want to ask you about what happened to you when you were aged 20 at university. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was really lucky to go to university and I did drama. Um, and I was attacked by a stranger in the street who tried to rape me. Um, he was caught. He went to prison. Uh, I got justice. And... So actually, for a horrendous incident, it was a, a good news story because he wasn't my husband's friend or my colleague at work or a stranger that was never caught. You know, it actually was, I got justice. But I remember being in the police, police station and a young woman coming up to the desk whilst I was leaving because I'd been there overnight. And she said, we, f uh, we found this shoe in our garden and we heard screaming last night and we were really worried. And I was like, that's my shoe. What was wrong with you? Why didn't you come out? She said, well, we, we were really scared. I said, we? And there was a group of women in a house that heard me fighting for my life outside and were too scared to come out. And I just thought at that point, oh, this is, this is terrible, this is hopeless. And it politicised me. So in a way, whilst it was obviously horrendous and... It was really tough for a couple of years about feeling anxious all the time. It was my, my political journey into the women's movement, into Greenham Common, to understanding why it happened, because it was about power. So, was it horrendous? I've been able to, and this is the glory of it, I've been able to use that experience to then put the safety of women and girls at the heart of my police and crime plan, investing many millions of pounds into making West Yorkshire the safest place to be a woman or a girl. Fighting for your life, those are words that mm. you, you just used. It sounds like an absolutely horrific attack. In fact, you, you described it as the worst thing that you could imagine having happened to you. How... You mentioned a couple of years after that, that things were tough. In what sense is it flashbacks? Is it trauma? Is it sleepless nights? Is it, put it into your own words, most of us, thank goodness, mm. have never been subject to what you went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say there's flashbacks, but there was certainly something about walking around a corner, somebody stood there and you just knew this was the moment. This was the moment that everybody's talked about, that your mum has said this, you know, this, you should just knee them in the balls and run away or whatever. And that freeze was really um, quite frightening, that I wasn't really capable of then moving because I just knew that that's what his intention was. Um, what really helped me, Gloria, was I got compensation for the attack and I bought a bicycle. And from then on in, um, I thought, I'm never going to walk the streets again because that's when you're most vulnerable. If you're on a bike, you can cycle away. Um, and it really did uh, lift my mood and made me feel um, that I could, you know, um, respond in a way that's positive. Thank God he was caught and yeah. sentenced. Were you informed when he was let out? No, no. Um, and whether th that's the process, I don't know. But I, I wasn't interested in... In, in that and I'm not interested in him at all um, but you know uh, I just feel for all those women that don't get that justice and that's why 
it's really been important for me to invest in independent sexual violence advisors because we know that when women go through this process, and it's more often than not women, that the court case is so long, yeah. two, three, four years, that they give up because they they want help for their trauma, they want to get therapy, they want to move on with their life. And the waiting means that they fall away. So an ISFA or an IDVA sort of carry you through the process so that we get better outcomes in West Yorkshire. You've got like a friend. If you've Indeed. been subject to attack, Talks you've you got through a friend the to talk you through and be yeah. with you yeah. all that way. Yeah. How, and how many of those have you got? We've got 25. 25. Yeah, yeah. Good. Let's talk about everyday sexism. So the hoo-ha, when you stood up, you were um, a shadow secretary of state, you had rushed from an event, you were in the House of Commons, you were stood up speaking for the opposition from the front bench. You had quite a classy dress on. It, it slipped off your shoulder. Literally, you could see a bit of your shoulder. Just talk us through the hoo-ha that then ensued. Gloria, it was mad. It was mad because I'd got a broken ankle. Like you say, I was at a musicians' union event. Government had done something stupid. So I, I got an urgent question, got them to the house. And I was leaning on the dispatch box. And like you say, it just slightly uh, fell further than slightly off the shoulder. And by the time I got back to my office, I was a slag, a slapper, breastfeeding, being taken from behind over a wheelie bin. I mean, the sexualization of this moment. So my response was, oh, you know, sorry I can't answer all of you. Um, not, not enough time, but who knew you could get so emotional over a shoulder? And, and this was picked up on social media. And then I decided to auction the 35 pound ASOS dress uh, for the proceeds to go to the Girl Guides who do brilliant work on body shaming for young girls. And we raised 20,200 for that dress. And it's just like, well, you yeah, know, thanks trolls. You've, do, you've done us a favor there. It's quite a good thing. That's a really nice and positive way <laughs> to end what's been a brilliant interview. Tracy Braben, thank you. My pleasure.